Understanding that the three goals of theology are interdependent alerts us to a serious issue. Which of the three goals has priority over the others? Should we concentrate more on orthodoxy, orthopraxis, or orthopathos? Many evangelicals have a straightforward answer to this question. They're convinced that God's design is for us to concentrate first on correcting our beliefs so that they will change our actions and our actions will then change our emotions. This model of priorities may be put in this way. Think right, do right, then you'll feel right. This approach toward theology is widespread. Now, of course, there should be no doubt that this strategy is perfectly legitimate. There's nothing wrong with it, per se, but a problem arises when we follow these priorities all of the time. Because we seem never to get beyond thinking about the first step, our theology becomes impoverished. Working on our theology of action and pathos is neglected or at best considered secondary. It's helpful to think about the goals of theology in the same way we think about the vital systems of the human body. We all know that we have several vital systems, a central nervous system, a digestive system, a pulmonary system, a cardiovascular system. Now, which of these should be given priority? What is the proper order for thinking about the interconnections among these systems? We may think about how the nervous system affects the digestive system, but we may also think about how the digestive system affects the nervous system. There are many legitimate and useful ways of working our way through these interconnections. Well, what we have seen about the interdependence of the three goals of theology indicates that constantly choosing one strategy or one focus is less than adequate. As we'll say many times in these lessons, our beliefs and our actions and our feelings form webs of multiple reciprocities. Rather than simply being linear in their relationships, they are multilinear or reciprocal to the point that we cannot always assign one priority. It is true that we should think rightly so that we can do rightly and then feel rightly. But at times, we should also do the right thing so that we can think the right way and feel the right way. And we should even feel the right way so that we can think and do correctly. The Holy Spirit leads his people toward the goals of theology in many different ways. How then do we decide what to do? How do we decide whether to stress right thinking, doing, or pathos? The answer to this question is that we must develop the wisdom to give priority and emphasis to the goals of theology that are needed most in any given situation. Because the deck of life is always shifting, balance can be nothing more than momentary synchronicity. Life is like the deck of a rocking ship. Sometimes it leans this way, and other times it leans that way. To keep our balance on a shifting deck, we have to learn how to lean one way and then the other, depending on what's happening under our feet. If we don't learn how to lean the right way, we'll surely fall overboard. There is no single prescribed way to pursue every theological task. Each time we seek to fulfill the goals of theology, we have to ask ourselves what is needed. What do we and those around us need most at this moment? Then we establish the appropriate orientation for that time and we pursue all the goals of theology with all of our hearts. Much harm can come to believers who do not know how to shift their priorities. When we constantly emphasize orthodoxy, we easily stumble into intellectualism. When we constantly emphasize practice, we easily move into legalism. And when we always stress the emotional goals of theology, we easily fall into emotionalism. But learning how to balance momentarily as the deck of life turns one way or the other can help us avoid these extremes. So each of us needs to ask the question, which of these tendencies characterizes the way that I do theology? Am I prone toward intellectualism? Am I prone toward legalism or emotionalism or some combination of these? Whatever our natural tendencies may be, we need to work hard to focus on those goals of theology that we tend to ignore.